salt container. It says bath. Vlog is ready, is edited and ready. I stayed up pretty late last night in order to finish it so I didn't have to work on it today. However, I need to do the thumbnail and I struggle with thumbnails ridiculously. I never know how I wanna do them. I never know the vibe that I kinda wanna go for. I like the ones where people like post full pictures and then themselves in the front with some words and stuff. So I might like kinda try and do that. I just, uh, we're gonna mess around with Canva a little bit and see what we can find. I'm gonna make everything a wee bit smaller just so I can see everything. Oh, I wanna have like a little bit of a mixture of everything. Like here's one of the books I'm currently reading. There's like a funny picture of me out. Oh, and then an outfit pick for sure. Also like the big key thing is that I'm reading Two Twisted Crowns. I'd like to have Two Twisted Crowns also on the front page. So I'm not gonna use all of these cause that's a little much, but these are, you know, the options. I think I've got it figured out. This is what we've got so far. So we've got, of course, selfie pick in the middle, aesthetic, selfies, cause it helps that there's face, um, the book, that I'm reading in the vlog, as well as the other two books that I'm also reading in the vlog. Just aesthetics drinks, coffee, matcha, who doesn't love it? I, I gotta include the kitty cat with the, with the cowboy hat. I have to. So I think this is overall really good. This is good. This is how I want to do it. Seems good to me. I'm actually really super happy with it. It's been a while since I've been really happy with a thumbnail. It looks like boy. decided to make some banana bread that just came out of the oven. I'm trying to find my banana bread recipe that I made, I wanna say like a year or so ago. It was the best banana bread recipe that I've ever made. So good, I found it off of Pinterest, but I didn't save the pin. And so now I can't remember which one it was and I've never had my banana bread turn out the same. <laughs> so I'm trying to find the right recipe. Looking at this bread, I can already tell that it's not it. Hopefully it still tastes good. I also didn't have enough bananas for like the full recipe so that, and the vanilla either, so that could have thrown it off as well. I've only achieved that bread like twice. Otherwise it kind of turns out like this where it's a little more light in color than what it typically is. Still, banana bread's banana bread, man. It is time. Finally have the new covers, Crescent City. Are you ready? Ah. These are so cool. They had a little bit of controversy, um, I believe, about them possibly being AI. I'm not entirely sure if that's true. I'm trying to get through Throne of Glass first before I move on to Crescent City. You know what? What I just realized? My Sarah J Moss collection is complete. I don't know if they're supposed to have anything on the back, but it, it is completely clear of any writing on the back of either one of these, as well as the front. The fronts don't have anything on them. Just the sides. However, yeah, they got into some trouble. Something about how this looked like AI generated art. They got announced. Boy, oh boy. How long ago did they get announced? Quite a while ago, but. Mm. Flap on them is like a three, if we're being honest here. It's just about the same as the one. This one is from Amazon. And so this one is from Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm. The sizing is about the same this way. Mm 
that'll be nice because they'll line up on the shelves correctly but i really appreciate that because they'll be the same height the this one is a lot more detailed it seems this one also stunning and it has these little ends even though it's paperback so it extends out which is pretty sick and then this one also does the same thing i'm so eager to get into crescent city because people say that like out of all the sarah j moss books this is their favorite i really really love the uk versions as well i think it has like a wolf or something on it but i'm happy with them and i got them on sale um for like 15 dollars each it was like a buy one get one free bogo sale i think but should i just have like a whole sarah j moss shelf or should i have them kind of split up because as of right now i have my akatar books split up my throne of glass books split up my crescent city was with my throne of glass and i wonder if i should put all of my sarah j moss on one shelf just to have her all together i'll just show you i have my throne of glass books up because they're a box set and i feel like i would have to do that with um my akatar books down here too we could try it out we can see Let's move these around a little bit. How the Sarah J Moss shelf ended up looking. I've got my Master Chief here kind of pointing to him. Um, but I've got the Agatar, Crescent City, and Throne of Glass. Assassin's Blade is missing. I just need to put it back on. Because next time I'm reading Air of Fire. But I don't know. It, they all fit. That's great. But it doesn't look special. You know what I mean? But they look good. That was about the only way I could get it to fit. This is about the best option that I can do to have them all included on one shelf. Good morning. I'm about to make some breakfast. French toast bites or French toast roll-ups, something like that. And then we're gonna head out. We've got quite a few holes at the library that we have to go and pick up. And then as well, I need to go to Sam's Club to get some water. Because we are just going through water, you know, like, like it's water. My outfit is so fall. It is officially spooky earring season. These are like my favorite go-tos. <laughs> Listen to these grapes that we got from Sam's. They're so crunchy. Hello, good morning. I have not gotten ready yet today and that's okay. I wanted to take some pictures really quick. I don't, I don't feel very in the mood. I don't know uh, for getting ready quite yet. I've had a migraine all day, so I've just been chilling. Went outside, cleaned off the back porch. And now I'm like, I should probably take my picture for Two Twisted Crowns because that comes out on the 12th and I would like to get that arc review up. I'm using my One Dark Window book as like a placeholder for Two Twisted Crowns. God, I can't talk. So then I can just Photoshop Two Twisted Crowns in there. So I'm just kind of gathering things that I think could maybe work. And this is what I've got going so far. I brought in my mom's from the front porch because this color has uh, everything. We've got a candle because candles are always a must. We've got this little light up pumpkin, the book. I've also got, excuse my mess, I've got my latte here, my ice chai that has pumpkin cold foam, which I think would be really pretty. I'm looking around to see what else I could put. Oh, let's see, I have tarot cards, which like honestly might work. 
see if we can get something going. Oh my god, you guys look. Oh my god, look. Hey, little lizard dude. I've got an audience member here. Hello, sir. So we're gonna put this book down first. No. 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 I have like moss and stuff that I'd like to use. This is what I've got so far. I need more greenery. Something about like the moss creeping in would look really pretty. I think around this base of the pumpkin. <sighs> the only problem is that it gets everywhere. And now I've got all this mess. Let's see if I can sweep it off to the side. <laughs> and then when we look down, I would like to tilt this in. We're gonna sacrifice City of Ashes to try and tilt this flower pot up towards. Yeah, like that. Sitting under there to tilt that. I'm vibing with it. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, I think my tea room order is here. Oh, I totally forgot my pumpkin spice here. Yeah, we're just gonna go with that. Your photos don't have to be super elaborate. Um, you can see that I literally did this in like 10 minutes. The cleanup actually takes a lot longer than the actual photo process and setting up. Cleaning process is also the one that I dread the most. <laughs> a little bit of a team unboxing, shall we? I'm actually very excited to give this to them. But I think I'm gonna give them the popper games today. And all of this was literally like 20 bucks. One of these. This one first. Okay. Oh, they're gonna like these. So, it's one of those pop-up games where it lights up and you have to push the buttons down that light up. I don't know if I have batteries. All right, this is how it works. turn it off or else I'm gonna keep playing. <laughs> so I got this one. Oh man, that is so addicting. I would have kept going and going and going. My kids are gonna love them. It's so much better than just staring at the fucking TV, I think. It'll work on their skills. So I got this one and this one. Their favorite colors. <laughs> These babies. Oh man, I don't know what seems to be more fun. These or those. This is so... It's so nostalgic! <laughs> I have my original Game Boy. We also had, my brother had it growing up, the OG, OG Game Boy that looks similar to this, but it's not color, it's not any of that. It's the standard old brick gray one, no color, no lights, no nothing. <laughs> we had that one for a really long time. I don't know, I think I got lost in a move or something, but I've always kept this. I got it for Christmas when I was like 10 years old. Still even got my Crash Purple in it. It's the only game that I have left. So I got these, and I got a red one. Red and pink, because they didn't have orange for that one. So let's see if it'll turn on. Even more English. So they have, let's see. Can I turn the volume down on this bitch? Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> no fucking way! Oh. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So that is what we got. It comes with, so you can plug it into a I wonder if I could plug it into my old TV. 
It might be worth a shot to check. $5, so now we know. I'm gonna edit my two Twisted Crowns photos. This is before editing and everything. I'm not too shabby. to finish Assassin's Blade today. I have about this much left. I'm a little bit over halfway through. I think I can do it. I just really want to end this vlog today to make it a weekly vlog and I would love to finish at least one book in a vlog. You know what I mean? I already know that this book is gonna hurt so much and I'm already feeling very attached to Sam and just knowing the future that is coming to him because we were told in Crown of Midnight what was going to happen. Knowing that that is coming, that every single time Selena is mean to Sam, I'm just like, girl, girl, chill. <laughs> Please don't be mean to our baby boy. It's so freaking obvious how much this boy loves you. Ever since she left the desert and came back to Arabin, and she was going to tell him that she was buying her freedom. I got flashbacks to Daughter of No Worlds. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't tell him. Like, yes, you need your freedom. But also, like, this is not going to end well. Trying to prepare myself. But there's just no way. I was like, in the beginning, I was like, we know how the story is going to pan out. I'm not going to let myself get attached. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. So we both will know that I... I'm gonna be a blubbering mess whenever it comes to time. It's frustrating. As somebody from the outside looking in, you see the kind of manipulative and emotional abusive behavior that Arabin is being towards Selena after he punished her. And now that she's back, he's being so kind and so sweet to her. She's falling for it. She's like, oh, well, maybe he does feel really sorry about what he did. It's just so hard to watch. You just want to, like, scream at her, shake her, just a little bit, like, Selena, wake up. It's just watching a train wreck happen, and it's so hard. It's all just gonna from here. I just knew it. No, she didn't give a damn about anything right now. Not even the fact that they're in a sewer. Sarah Day Mass is really good at just like surprising you and you not seeing things coming. So I'm gonna try and record my reaction to the pain. <sighs> like the thing that I don't get is how she's so completely naive. Arabin literally was trying to buy a hundred slaves, literally in the first chapters of the book. Why would he be trying to help the slaves now? He is sending her to unalive Donegal because he's a bad guy and wants to get rid of all the safe houses. That doesn't add up. Why does she think that Arabin is this good guy that is like taking on clients that want to help them He's just a selfish guy. All he wants is money and power And we all know that good guys don't want money and power Oh God. No That's so oh that's so nasty that feels so icky the book It can just end here I won't be mad. <laughs> we don't need to read this. We don't need to read any of this. The book is done. It's good. It's all over. They, you know, they're free. They're happily ever after. <sighs> you want to hear something ridiculous? Whenever I'm scared of my wits, I tell myself, 
my name is Sam Cortland and I will not be afraid. Now that I know where that quote has come from and who she is quoting in that, it just, oh, it hurts even more. We're so close to the end. So close. The fact that Arabin warned her and him and he said that he, even if he was offered the glass castle itself, he would not take that job, but he's still willing to retaliate on Selena's behalf so many conflicting feelings because obviously like I hate Ervin but the fact that he's not willing to just let that go you know what I mean he sees how much Selena is hurt and he's willing to enact revenge for her not just kind of like a yeah I told you so kind of thing he is willing to risk so much for her still anything nice I said about Arabin, I take it back. I'm just as scummy as Selena. To think that he even cared about her a smidgen of a bit. He doesn't even care about her as a person. He thinks that she is her. He believes that he ah! He believes that she is his belonging. That's it. He doesn't like to share his belongings. Are you kidding me? And the fact now, she still doesn't know. That, oh, I can't wait until she figures it out. It was Arabin all along. I can't fucking wait. I've been in. I'll be honest with you. I was expecting to see it happen. It, it leaves you with a feeling of just utter helplessness. It plays on the imagination a little bit more. We know it was bad, but the fact that like Sarah left that up to us to kind of never really know what exactly happened, what went down, you know? And I don't have to wonder what happens next because I've read the Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight, so I know exactly what happens after that. You know, I, I expected to go through the emotions, but no, it was like one, not even one page of us. One day he's there, one day he's not. And that's how it is in real life. I'm glad to get that under my belt now so I can move <laughs> on, because I am told that Air of Fire is where the true Throne of Glass party really starts, and we start to have a lot more fun with it, so I'm eager to move on to that. I am gonna call this an end to this vlog. <sighs> And so it was so sad. We're gonna end off on that. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope that you have a wonderful day. And of course, stay excellent. Bye.